Achievers, welcome back. I have a new project here on my loom today and I thought I'd share it with you. So this is a pattern from the, let's see, it's the May-June issue of uh, Handwoven Magazine in 2018 and it's called uh, Rings of Fancy Bath Mats. This is a uh, double weave type of pattern that was adapted by Marty Benson and he adapted an overshot over sorry an overshot pattern to make it double weave so to make it thicker and to decrease the floats so it appears to be just plain weave but it has a very interesting pattern to it and I'll show you a picture here. Let's see if I can get a good shot of this. Okay, so you can see that it has some rings in it with some stripes. And so I thought that this would be a great uh, pattern to make. Um, I needed some a new uh, runner rug for my kitchen. So that's what I'm making today. Uh, the pattern as written uh, makes two bath mats that end up being 36 inches long. I modified it to make one mat that is 72 inches long. So a couple of things that I ran into. Uh, the pattern as written requires you to uh, press two treadles to raise two sets of shafts. I have a countermarch loom and that's not really possible to do on a countermarch loom with a normal tie-up. Um, there are ways around it, but I didn't really want to get into that. Given the fact this is a four shaft pattern with six treadles, um, I have a 12 shaft loom with 14 treadles. So I just modified the tie up to make those double uh, treadled picks um, a single treadle in themselves. So uh, it worked out fine. Um, this uses uh, a 816 cotton and for the warp and a sugar and cream four ply worsted weight yarn, just an, a knitting yarn uh, for the weft. Um, the warp is makes up the colored stripes and the weft is all in the natural color. So the other thing that I wanted to share with you is a little hack that I use when I am weaving complicated um, patterns and keeping track of my um, treadling. I don't have an iPad and I didn't want to spend the money for, um, and even if I did, I didn't want to spend the money for uh, the software for the, um, I think it's the iTrack or something like that. I can't remember what the name of it is, but it you can keep track of your treadling. So I decided to use the knitting software that I use called Knit Companion. And I have a Kindle Fire that that is loaded onto. And the nice thing about this program is you upload a, or, or you, you download a PDF to the app and it will uh, load it in and then you have highlighting bars that you can use to keep track of where you are in the pattern. So I use this for my weaving also. So I just thought I would share that with you. So what I've done here, and we'll get another close-up picture of this. So I've taken and I've created, these are the uh, treadles that I created with uh, the pattern and the double tie-ups. Um, this here 
are the treadle numbers. These are the shafts that rise. And I use this column just to double check when I'm weaving along um, to make sure that I am not uh, stepping on the wrong treadle by accident. So this is the beginning of the pattern. This is the repeat that is done uh, six times. And then this is the, the end of the pattern. Um, the highlight uh, can be moved so that you can keep track of where you are. And um, I just put it in the middle of the four pick sequence that I'm on and keep track of it that way. So we'll go ahead and um, realign the camera so that you can see the pattern that I'm weaving and we'll do a little bit of weaving. Okay, so here we have the pattern and uh, my next sequence is the 4859. So we'll just go ahead and do that. This does require a fairly firm beat. So we're just going to go ahead and advance the warp. Um, this is pretty thick yarn, and the it goes the weaving goes fairly fairly quickly. Um, so I do have to advance the warp fairly often. So this is a double weave uh, pattern. So um, not sure if you can see the underside from your angle, but I'll get a picture of that also. Um, but the pattern on the top and the bottom are exactly the same, um, which is kind of cool. Uh, the set is, um, let's see, what is this? This is 16, uh, ends per inch and so that's uh, eight ends per inch on each side and then the picks per inch are 14 um, picks per inch seven picks per inch on each side all right
I know that there are six of these little brown checks. Um, and so I just wanted to double check and make sure that I did it correctly and didn't miscount. Okay, so. So because this is really thick yarn, um, to make this slice as invisible as possible, um, I'm going to uh, slice each half, um, or each end in half. So what I do that is, um, I split the four eyes in half, so I have two eyes on each side, I cut off half of the eye, that's on this end, I do the exact same thing on the new end, and I cut off that same amount, it doesn't have to be exact. And then because this is almost to the right end, um, in fact, yeah, I think what I'm going to do, I don't want this to be sliced right at the edge, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut it back further, and I'll put my slice in the middle, that way it's going to be less noticeable. And I'm going to just push this one through my hand, and notice that I kept my shaft open the entire time I was doing that, so that I didn't lose track of where I was. Because in other words, I'm losing track of where you are, and then you have to unweave back to where you are. So, now I'm going to here, and we'll pull this one in, and just overlap that. So that was six. Okay. So I'm going to stop and bring in close so you can see how invisible that splice ends up being. So, the splice is right here, and you can see it. But once this is wet finished and dry and pressed, you will not be able to see that at all. Um, in fact, I was going to go back and look. So here is my previous one. And I only knew it was there because a little um, end stuck out. But otherwise, you're never going to see that. That's the way that I like to do splices on this thick yarn. If it's thinner yarn, um, it's not as not as much of a problem, and you don't really see them when you just um, overlap them, you know, one to one. Because there is, because you go through yarn fairly quickly, you do have a fair number of splices. on this is pretty tight because it's a double weave so it wants to pull my shafts forward when I advance
Okay, so I need to advance my warp again, and I am out of yarn again, and I am out of bobbins again. So I need to wind another three bobbins, which is one skein of yarn, and um, that will do probably mm, two and a half repeats. So I have two more skeins left to wind, and uh, then I'll be done with this rug. Okay, we are at the end of the rug, and now we need to do the hem. The hem is a little bit different on this. Uh, because it's double-sided, they want uh, to make a nice hem that you can't see. So they're having me weave uh, a top layer with the um, normal weft yarn, and then the instructions say to weave the bottom layer at the same time with waist yarn. Um, because I'm going to have to secure the waste yarn to the warp um, and then you cut some of it away, I decided to go ahead and use um, the same yarn for the waste yarn that I'm using for the weft. We'll see how this works. Um, I did it on the beginning of the rug for the beginning hem and um, but I won't know until I take it off and try and make the hem. So um, the hem is a, th is a one inch of the treadles three, seven, four, ten. So we'll go ahead and do that. But for all of the top layers, which are only lifting one shaft, we're going to continue our normal weft yarn. And then for the bottom layer, which is the waist yarn, we're going to use our waist yarn shuttle. And we're going to be sure to not interlace the edges. So. Oh. Such a little guy. Alright, so um, seven, and find my tail here. I don't need to tuck my tail because this is going to be um, it's waist yarn. Be sure to not interlace those, which normally you would want to interlace them so that um, you wouldn't you would close up the the gap. But we're not doing that in this case.
see what we've got here. Um, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so since the one layer is seven picks per inch, um, I believe I have my uh, seven picks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I do. Um, and that is. measure here and that is exactly one inch so now I am going to um, cut this tuck my tail on the top and then um, I will use the waste yarn to um, weave some uh, some additional picks to secure the weft, and then we'll cut it off, um, secure the ends, and I will show you the uh, procedure for doing the hem. Um, just a little note, you can see, hopefully you can see that, uh, you can see that the top layer and the bottom layer are separate. Um, so the instructions say to secure the weft here on the top and then secure the weft uh, close to where it begins on the bottom and then uh, you cut this back, fold this over and you end up with a half inch hem um, and you stitch this by hand. So we'll see how that goes. So because of the bulk of this particular yarn, I'm going to, before I tuck the tail, I'm going to split, pull it back. Okay, so I'm going to pull this back to about here, um, split the weft. So this is similar to what I did when I was um, splicing uh, for a new bobbin. I'm just going to come back here and that will just um, eliminate a lot of bulk. So I think we'll go back there. That's about right. So that eliminates a lot of bulk and um, you won't see that where I tuck the tail. And normally I wouldn't do that um, for like an A2 cotton, but because this is so thick, um, it just eliminates that bulk. Okay, so now we're going to um, weave a few picks of waste uh, on the top and bottom just to hold the weft in place until I can secure it with Uh, secure it with the sewing machine. I'm going to leave it at three. That's fine. Cut that one, cut that one, and we're ready to take it off the loom. How exciting! Okay, so I am going to uh, release the tension off the back. All right, so we'll go ahead and cut this off. I 
always love this part of a project. So you can see the back now. That's pretty cool. Oh, it looks like I have an error. Wow. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, so that's, that's what happens when you, um, you're just weaving along and you lose track of where you are. It looks like I have uh, some extra picks in there in the same shed. So uh, it's the back of the rug. I'll, I might fix it. We'll see. Um, but we'll go ahead and unroll it. See how many more mistakes I made. Go quite that fast. This is going to be an awesome rug for, um, I think we're going to put it in our kitchen. sure it's going to fit in my washing machine now. Okay, so um, go ahead and cut this off of the front apron rod. Sure, I don't get my apron ties in there. Okay. All right, there we go. Um, so we'll get this. Uh, we'll get this stitched up, and um, then we'll be back.